New uh, Universities team taking on the Sheffield Steel Dogs. This is the uh, GB University's first opportunity to play together as a team. The university. Now, a little bit about University. It is what it says it is. It's basically a university answer to the Olympics. Uh, the team are going to go out there. Um, their, first, their first game is on the 2nd of March. It's against Canada. So you can tell the level of opposition they're going to play. Tonight gives them a perfect opportunity to test out some lines, to test out their power play, to test out the penalty kill, um, and, and really see how they, they function as a team. I spent some time with the guys in the, in the room. There's a good camaraderie between the GB University team and the, uh, and the staff seem really excited about the team they've picked. So I think they should be in for a real cracker tonight. Um, a little bit about the GB University programme. GB University programme's been running now since 2007. Originally just a men's programme, we have a women's programme as well. Uh, the men's have been uh, going on and off to university since 2007. The women have been to several events um, also, but unfortunately didn't qualify this year for university. Um, so it's only the men that are attending. Uh, the university women's team, they did spend some time in uh, Finland. If you want to know more about that, then you can check that out on the BIHA podcast, which can be found on Apple um, Podcasts or on SoundCloud. Um, a little bit more about uh, the, the opposition they're facing tonight. They're facing the Steel Dogs, who've been on the go um, and basically the top flight of English hockey since 2010. Um, they uh, were previously uh, competed under a different name, which I won't say because I can't pronounce. But the, uh, the Steel Dogs are quite, a, despite their short history, are a very storied team, have a lot of good, talented players. Tonight, they're bringing in a few of the youngsters to give them a chance to see how they fare, and they will be facing, against, facing off against some of their teammates. There have been several Steel Dogs in the GB team. Um, if you're not sure about the BIHA, the BIHA is the British University Ice Hockey Association, and um, it's been on the go now for, I think, about 15 years, maybe longer. Um, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, it, we are encouraging hockey at university at all levels, from very novice players to the very top of the game, with some players who played elite league hockey also featuring in our national championships. If you enjoyed tonight's broadcast, you can check back with us in April. Um, for the first three weekends in April, we will be hosting the BIHA National Championship Games and the playoff uh, games will be included in that. If you check back in with us then, there'll be lots of hockey to fill your whole day out. If you don't want to do anything else, you want to sit on the couch and do nothing but watch hockey, then the place to be is right here on this live stream because it'll be excellent. Now, Obviously, leading into the next game, you don't want to just look at my ugly mug all night. You want to um, get ready, hear some of the thoughts of the players before they go on their adventure to Krasnoyar in Russia. This is a big, big tournament for these guys. Some of them, it'll be the highest level of hockey they'll ever play in their lives. And I was fortunate enough to speak to the two assistant captains of GBU earlier on, Ivan Antonov and Christian Johnson. I also spoke to the goalie, Adam Long, and the coach, uh, Matt Bradbury. They have some very in-depth uh, interviews with them. And if you want to sit back and enjoy this, I will start off with Ivan Antonov now, and you can hear all the interviews right through. So I'm joined here with uh, GBU assistant captain, Ivan Antonov. Hi, Ivan. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. And uh, you've, you've been to WUGS before, so what's the normal day like at, at WUGS? Um, so normally you wake up, go to breakfast, and then you normally go to the ice rink for a pre-game skate. After pre-game skate, obviously you have your <coughs> cool down and have your nutrition, have food. Normally you have a bit of time to rest um, and do your own thing. Afterwards you have a pre-game and then it's just like a typical game day where you go to the ice rink, you do your warm-up and then you play the game. Okay, and uh, you play for the, the Bracknell Bees outside of your, your time with GBU. Yeah. How's, how's your season going uh, so far with them? Um, so far, the season's not going too bad. Um, I think we're third or fourth in the league at the moment. So hopefully we can gain some momentum heading into the playoffs and hopefully win some trophies. Now, the last time um, I saw you play was uh, the International All-Stars game. 
and uh, on the live stream we got a, a message through from Stuart Mogg who yeah. said I was to watch out for you and then you scored a fantastic goal. What is your most memorable goal in, uh, in hockey history? Um, I would have to say my most memorable goal is like it was in a league game and it wasn't the most important of league games but it's the way I scored the goal. Yeah, I think it was at the time I was playing with Josh Smith so he dumped the puck in and I touched the puck one time with the blue line and then it was out of my reach so I was just waving my stick in front of the puck and I don't know what the goalie did but he just lay it through his legs and I know that's my most memorable goal I would have to say. <laughs> and of course uh, you're, going, you're going to Russia for what? Is it a bit of a homecoming for you? Does it have a special significance to you? Uh, um, yeah, I would say so. It's quite nice to go back and play in the country where you were born. Um, I actually had the pleasure of going to Krasnoyarsk in the summer because I went hiking near there and it was quite surreal to see like all the banners getting put up and there was a lot of publicity around the event in Russia. Okay, finally. Um and I, didn't, I didn't prep you for this question, but you've probably been on a lot of hockey road trips, stayed a lot of nights. Who's been your worst roommate so far? Oh, worst roommate. I don't even know. There's so many to choose from. <laughs> That's fair, fair enough. I'll not press you too hard. You've got some guys watching from the side there. Um, but um, yeah. have you got anyone you want to give a shout out to before? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ivan. Cheers. <laughs> I'm joined here with uh, GBU's assistant captain, Christian Johnson, uh, who plays on, on D. Uh, Christian, um, you are going to Wugs for the second time. Um, can you tell me how you're feeling about that? Yeah, very chuffed, very excited as well to get away. The, the last games was fantastic and really memorable, so we're looking forward to getting away again and, and seeing what Siberia is like in another part of the world I've not been to, so looking forward to that. Okay, and uh, you grew up uh, playing on the uh, the rinks of Whitley Bay. Did, yeah. At least that's what Elite, Pro Elite Prospect said. Is, yeah. If you had a message for any anyone um, who was in your shoes maybe 10, 15 years ago, what would you say to them? Just enjoy Whitley Bay, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a one of a kind rink to play in and when you're there you learn to love it and it's, it's fantastic. Like, you know I mean, he's playing Scotland, playing different rinks, but there's no place like home, so. Okay, and you've played, you're playing rinks all around the world. Is there anywhere more wild than your home uh, team rink of Aberdeen? I don't think I don't think so. Aberdeen's up there with pretty most. We've got probably the best fans in the league, and uh, it's it's always a busy night every Saturday. So I think I think it's got to be up there one of the most uh, most memorable ones for sure. Okay, and talking about uh, mem memories, uh, what's been your most memorable hockey moment in your career to date? There's quite a few over over the time. I think uh, I would definitely probably say playing the Wugs last time. Kazakhstan was great. It was a different kind of event. Uh, it was just so well looked after by everybody, and it was fantastic. So I think it's probably. Probably one of the most memorable ones for sure. Okay, and uh, what, what, how are you expecting GB will fare in this next one? Because you seem to have quite a hard group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got we've got a tough group, but I think we're doing really well. We've got a, a good group of guys that really get on well. And I think that's half the battle. If all the boys get on well, then you can go and get every game and enjoy it. And I think potentially do well. We'll turn turn some heads and maybe get a couple of good scorelines. Mm -hmm. And you might not know this, but in the last game you um, you played for uh, GBU International All Stars game. Um, YouTube was blowing up with support from Aberdeen and yeah. all over for, for you. Uh, of course, you scored that fantastic goal in that game. Um, how, how did you enjoy that as an event? Oh, it was fantastic. It was a great day and it was nice to play down here in Sheffield again. It's a nice ice rink and there was a bit of support and that. And it was good fun playing with the boys. Like A lot of boys already know and, and things like that from pre previous playing Whitley Bay and things. But no, it was good fun. It was a good event and it was a good challenge for us. And hopefully tonight will be a good challenge as well. Okay, have you got anyone you want to give a shout out to before you, uh, before uh, you go and get ready for the game? Just the man himself, uh, Cookie, but, uh, but no, apart from that, that's it. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks, I'm joined with uh, GBU goalie um, Adam Long. Adam's made a step up to Elite League this season. How's that been for you? Um, I've only been there for about five weeks now, but um, I've really enjoyed the challenge. Uh, I trained a lot with Milton Keynes last year, so I knew a lot of what it was about. Um, so now it's just trying to develop my game to get into that starting spot within their team and work alongside all the imports that they have and just better myself really. And you, you've been to um, university before. Um, as a goalie, what's the, what's the difference like between university and say your regular NIHL games? Um, I mean, 
obviously the level that we're playing at is a lot higher. You got a lot of guys like for the Canadian American team last year. A few of them have been drafted and they played in the OHL and leagues like that, which you don't really see over here. But yeah, the shot level was a lot higher, and that's why I'm hoping with the step up to elite this year, that's going to kind of prepare me a little bit better to kind of stop them, or hopefully stop them, I should say. Yeah. Um, I mean, after Kazakhstan a few years ago, I faced a lot of shots, and the other goalies faced a lot of shots. So it's just all part of the experience, and I mean, the best we can do and help the team, then that's all we're looking for, really. Okay, and uh, you, um, you, you're a goalie, and a lot of people say you've got to be a bit, a bit mad to be a goalie. Um, for anyone that's considered is on the fence, which way they want to go in hockey, what would you say about being a goalie? Um, I'd say it looks a lot worse when you're watching from the outside than rather being on the ice. Uh, that's the first thing I'd say. Uh, but give it a try. I mean, you don't really know until you've tried it and a lot of people write it off before they even give it a go. Um, I've always wanted to be a goalie and always have been a goalie in all the sports I've played, um, if it's been possible. Um, but yeah, I love it. I like the pressure. I thrive from the pressure and that pressure makes me play better. Okay, and uh, there's obviously three goalies going away to, uh, to Krasny Yar. Um, what's it like, the, what's the, the camaraderie like between the goalies? Because sometimes you're kind of competing for that spot, but you're also, you also want to support each other as a team as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we all want to play and it's healthy competition. We all know what our job is. We all like push each other, we help each other. If we see little things that we need that might need to be addressed or a little bit of help that we can give, um, then we definitely give it. Um, but yeah, we, we're just there to support each other. It doesn't matter who plays as long as we're all having fun. We're, everyone's there as a team. Um, I mean, we're not the only people on the ice, so it is a team game. And and yeah, we just try and support each other the whole way, really. Okay, uh, a lot of people don't know this, or some people do. I used to be a goalie and I had a superstition. I wore odd socks. What Do you have any superstitions that you, you must do before a game? Um, no, not really. Just the only superstition I have really is foam rolling can't foam roll before or after a game I just I don't know why I just don't like it every, every time I've done it I've never played well afterwards so that's just always in my head but other than that no I don't really have any other superstitions just turn up play try and do my job <laughs> okay and there'll be quite a few people watching at home um, is there anything you want to anyone you want to give a shout out to say hello to back in Manchester um, not really so much Manchester just everyone really everyone that's going to support us the whole way just keep watching and and all the messages that we have on social media through all the team it's all everyone uh, like respects them and appreciates the support that we have I mean it's it's not as well recognized as all the other sports so any support that we get is is a big boost while we're there well thanks very much and good luck in, in Russia thank you <laughs> I'm joined here with GBU head coach Matt Bradbury uh, Matt, you guys have got a game tonight with the Sheffield Steel Dogs. Uh, what challenge do you think that will bring uh, think, to your team? I think the challenge will be that uh, we're a new team, fresh together, and um, that we're looking forward to playing a, a balanced Sheffield team, but also with some um, good quality players in there as well. So that will be a bit of a test for us. But for us, really, it's a good run out, and it's just a chance to get together in that final preparations before we fly out two weeks yesterday. And you've had a couple of meets since we last spoke, being at the IES game. Uh, how, how's the training been since then? Training's been good, getting together, making those final cuts, the final preparation. And um, we've been together today, just got our heads around and got the lines together, got ourselves sorted out. So what you'll see tonight is very much a, uh, a bit of a fresh outlay of what we're going to see at the World Student Games. It's not by far is it the finished article, but uh, tonight's our balance set up to hopefully so it gives us somewhere to start from. It's a starting point. And I noticed that uh, when the squad was announced, there seemed to be more defensive players than forwards. Is there, is there some players that are maybe play, playing out of position to, to make the lines work? or? No, no, we, we, we look, I mean, we've got 8D, and uh, I think we've got something like about nine forwards. So Seems to have 10 us, on the thing. 10 forwards, sorry, 10 forwards, sorry. 10 <laughs> yeah. forwards, yeah, we've got one guy who can play front and back as well, so it's not too worried, that's not too much of a worry for us. But what we have got is we've got a lot of depth, and um, we've um, done a document that's literally pulling together the 2017 squad against the 2019 squad and um, whilst 17 was a good team, this is a stronger team with a lot more depth. Excellent um, and uh, you've, you've changed the squad a little bit since the, the IAS squad and uh, would you say that was that strengthened the squad somewhat? 
Yeah, I mean, we're looking really at uh, the mainstay from 2017. So we're recalling uh, seven players that will be travelling away with us. So seven's a good basis of a nice uh, squad to take away. So seven people that uh, play at a good level in the um, NIHL, both North and South, and they, they know their way around that league, but also they all know each other as well. So that really helps to gel us straight away. So that's one little advantage we do have over a lot of the teams that are going away to the uh, university ad is that uh, these guys know each other, they're in regular contact with each other, which I guess a lot of the other teams won't have that kind of uh, consistency. So whilst they'll be uh, top level hockey players and uh, will be uh, a finely tuned uh, close unit by the time we get across to uh, Krasnyarsk. I was just going to ask you about that actually because I've, I've been in the room twice now just sort of looking for people to interview and uh, th there seems to be a good camaraderie between the players. Is, does that make it easier for you as a coach? Absolutely because um, when well, you've got the level of players we've got as well it's, it's my job really to manage them, make sure they're in a good place, the best place they can be and um, we've got guys that can play the game, there's no doubt about that but it's just putting those uh, combinations together and uh, keeping them motivated, keeping them uh, like I say, hopefully injury free. We've got a great staff around us to support us when we go over there, which is one of the key things that I suppose a lot of these guys might not have back at home. So that'll be something new. And um, it's a case of like just really managing their time as well to make sure that they're on the ice when they need to be on the ice, resting when they need to rest, because it's obviously going to be a, a tough old 10 days, but um, something that everyone should be really looking forward to, which the buzz in the uh, room, like you say, is fantastic. And uh, that will help us in our, in our journey. And have you got anyone that's, uh, that's maybe just about to start uni, a younger player that's, uh, that's, look, that's you know, playing high-end hockey, that's maybe thinking of trying out for GBU in the future, what would you say to them as a piece of advice? A piece of advice is, you know, I've been around the game a long time and the guys that are part of this setup here, it's only getting better, it's only getting stronger and this competition that you will attend as a GBU player is the best thing you'll probably ever experience in your hockey days. Obviously, unless you make it to the April Championships um, with the GB team, which is, which is an amazing feat in itself. But for anybody that maybe can't make it to that standard, the level of hockey and the actual tournament, the experience itself is, is only second to the Winter Olympics. Just going off piece slightly, because you're obviously quite an experienced campaigner in Great Britain uh, in general, um, would you say that Great British hockey is on the up? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I think there's more opportunities out there for, for more people, and I think that's the biggest key. There's a lot of good um, young blood out there, and it's a case of working with them. But it's not about sitting on the bench, it's about getting lots of ice time. The more, the more you can get on the ice, the better you're going to be, and you've got to have that, sort of like that heart drive and determination. I think uh, that's, that's plenty around England and Scotland and across the whole of the UK. Thanks very much, Matt. I wish you all the best in Krasnyar, and I uh, hope you can come back... Um, uh, well, I'm sure you'll come back. Sorry, haven't done us proud. Okay, Thanks. thank you. So, hi, everyone, and welcome back. Um, I'm Richard Gray, uh, Rambo, as many of you know me as. Uh, thanks to everyone that's tuned in so far. Hello to Eva Harrison and Pete Bradbury. You can talk to us on the uh, chat uh, side of YouTube. Um, I think. Just now would be a good time to bring in our uh, our host, Joe Staten, um, and just find out what his thoughts are on this game tonight. So, Joe, what, what are you thinking about this game? Oh, I'm not to bring him in yet. Sorry, he's, he's, he's just frantically getting himself ready. But um, I'm looking forward to this game tonight. Um, the GBU team is looking pretty sharp from what I've seen so far. Good camaraderie between the guys. Uh, there is... Uh, a f several players who are uh, returning to Wugs, um, Christopher Cook, the captain, uh, number 10, Jackson Price, number 11, Christian Johnson, the assistant captain, number 13, Andres Tagaris, uh, number 17, James Scott, number 21, Liam Charnock, number 24, Ivan Antonoff, the other assistant captain, number 30, Adam Long in net, and number 31, Tom Hovel in net. Um, so that leaves several players who are making their GBU uh, debut at Wugs this uh, season, and that is uh, number three, Joshua Grievesen, four, Donald Campbell, five, Thomas Relf, 15, Cameron Pywell, 18, Daniel Fay, 23, Jordan Liddell, 25, Connor Henderson, 32, Joshua Crane, the other goalie, 38, Solomon Smith, 71, Nathan Long, 89, Scott Henderson, 94, Joshua Cook, and 97, Ruskin Springer-Hughes. So that's the team list in front of you, folks. Um, and there's uh, several uh, different clubs and universities represented from across the United Kingdom, uh, Wales, Scotland, 
and England all represented in that lineup. So um, I'll now I'll now take this opportunity to bring in um, Joe Staten, um, who's who's uh, now available on mic. Joe, what are you thinking about tonight's game? And of course, Joe, this game is not only brought to uh, the viewers by BOHA, but also by uh, Sports Streaming UK. Um, and it's a ve your venture. Um, how does it feel to be bringing um, hockey to these people at home? Oh, well, I mean, I I've always enjoyed playing it. Um, it's great to, to be able to be involved in this sort of way with it. Um, I I'm, a, I'm a nerd at art, so I've always, been in I've always been up with the technology side of things. And it's great that this is sort of developed from our original um, coverage of the Nationals. I mean, it, it's been years of sort of development from my original electronic game sheet up to the sort of streaming package we have now uh, and everything we do with that. It's, um, it's a bit of a time. We try and add more each time. Uh, we've got some more plans for this season. Um, hopefully we'll have a ref cam at some point. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we all love to see what Andy sees. Uh, <laughs> some guys in home will definitely like to see what Andy sees. <laughs> But uh, some ref cabs, some bits and pieces. Maybe for the longer format games, we'll have um, a few more sort of penalty box shots. There's always some good fun when someone's whinging about a penalty they've taken. Um, and yeah, just bits and pieces like that. And hopefully getting on top of some of the gremlins we've had. But we just want to, we, we want to every year just add that little bit more just so we can, we can offer a better package overall. Um, it's... It's a slow process. There's not much of a budget in university ice hockey, that's for sure. But we've done we've done what we can over the years, and uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. There's some nice, there's some, there's some subtle bits behind the scenes that no one will see with regards to this stream that have made things easier for me. But um, every year we'll add something new, and it's good to see that we're developing this as the hockey's getting better. Because year on year, the level of the university ice hockey is, is, is improving significantly, especially at the non-checking level, which is great to see. Because that non-checking the non-checking divisions gives opportunity for so many new players to come into the sport and without that it was our growth was quite low we've added the non-checking and year on year on year the growth numbers in non-checking are amazing so um yeah long may it continue and it just it, it gives new players a chance to get involved in the sport which is it's expensive at the end of the day and it's whereas most other sports you're on your feet you can you can run around, <laughs> at least get involved with ice skating. You, with hockey, you've got skating in, and you've got to learn to skate before you can really play. So um, lowering those barriers to entry and equally offering these opportunities at, at international level, we're sort of we're catering at both ends. And the fact that we had the IAS games last year, this GBU game today, hopefully IAS games again this, this year at nationals, um, we we're, we're just, just continue to push that development at both ends of the spectrum. And it's fantastic to see, and uh, yeah, long may it continue. And uh, for the f for the future, is there any is there any sneaky uh, new features that are gonna gonna come up at nationals? Um, I, I don't want to promise anything. Uh, it depends on my workload, uh, with my day job. But I, there's some stuff I'd love to do. There is some stuff I would love to do. So we'll see how it goes. I I'm quietly confident, but um, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. But. Um, there's some bits and pieces. I mean, we've worked, uh, there's some stuff I work on which is just sort of all the titling, the automation side of things, because the more I can automate, the, the less there is to go wrong. <laughs> um, the, I, I mean, we'd like, I'd like to get integration with the website, the tweets and everything, just tying everything together, uh, um, getting more, more opportunity for people to get involved from watching the stream at the end of the day, uh, like the guys in chat. Um, helping them to get involved um, while they're watching because it's great to have audience out there um, coming and watching these things so yeah whatever we can do would be fantastic so there's bits and pieces on there um, just sort of I don't know maybe maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll try and get we can get some referee uh, uh, referee comments onto the stream maybe not tell the refs that we're going to put them live on the stream but we could uh, have a listen to them making some of those calls Maybe some of that fruity language we get when the uh, the players disagree with their with the referee's opinion of a situation, but um, yeah, we'll see. I I, I I'm keeping my cards close to my chest. I, I just 
I, I, I'd rather under-promise and over-deliver. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll see where we go. Excellent. And uh, just uh, you, you said you know some of the guys from the Steel Dogs. Uh, anyone we should be looking out for tonight on either side? Uh, on either side, well, we, I mean, you know, the, you know the GBU guys better than me, but the, the name checks are out there that we're, everyone loves a bit of Chris Cook at the end of the day. So... Um, He's, he's one of the main guys. And again, you look at the uh, Ivan Antonov. I mean, I remember watching him play years ago, and he was he was he was good at the EPL level um, all those years ago before it folded. So he's he's not got any worse, that's for sure. Um, on the Steel Dog side, some good young lads coming through, and I don't want to put any pressures on any in particular. But there's a good there's a good the, the academy's doing a decent job here in Sheffield, and there's some good players coming through. We all know about the likes of. Um, of Cole and, and Liam Kirk. I mean, well, Liam Kirk, the perfect example of who's, who's over there in uh, in the US playing playing feeder leagues, and it's fantastic to see him doing well out there. So there's um, there's been a good some good development uh, over here, and uh, I, I can see Mr. Richard Fraley has uh, has put go team stripes, but obviously I can name check Brian. He's not he's not, I don't believe he's on the team sheets today, <laughs> but I filled him in, but. Uh, I remember Ryan played for Steel Dogs, so he's uh, he, he's up there as well. But yeah, go Team Stripes. I know um, we'll have uh, our very own Andrew, Andy Miller out there, the Grand Overlord, making sure everything does things properly. But it's um, yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah um, Joe, I hate to bring up a technical issue on I this know, feed. I've seen, I've seen um, it. <laughs> we seem to I have was a too busy talking. I was just talking uh, about it. And, uh, <laughs> too much chatting. That's what it is. Yeah, as, as everyone will know on the stream, I just talk and Joe fixes everything behind the scenes normally. It's his first time he's got to relax and sit back and have a chat on the live stream. <laughs> yeah, this is the yeah, first time we're involved. There we go. So Richard's answered the question. Ryan is on the line tonight. There we go. So he'll be, he'll be out there with, uh, with Andy. I'm not sure. Is Scott on? Scott I, can, on can, I can confirm the officiating uh, team of uh, Andy Miller and uh, Dave Good, uh, without an E, uh, on the on the uh, sorry in the middle and uh, Ryan Fraley and Scott Ellis on the line. Oh, I guess right. So as uh, as they always say, uh, go hashtag Team Stripes and all the rest of it. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they'll be they'll keep a tight leash on this game and they'll be. Uh, I'm sure there'll be no silly stuff because uh, GBU have got a tournament to focus on, and uh, the Sheffield boys they'll be wanting to prove that they can get in the big boys club. So. Um, I don't think there'll be any daft stuff, but um, we've got a four four person crew anyway, um, largely so there's more people to get in the way when the action is taking place. Uh, of so course. <laughs> and more people to fall over, because that's what we all enjoy is at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, though, I mean, I, I don't know, sometimes I think, you know, do, do the referees have to buy beers for everyone in the crowd if they if they, if they fall over? I don't I, I definitely think should buy it for us up here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few people watching in. As I say, you can uh, you can contact us on the on the chat. Um, you can tweet us though. We won't be able to check that quite as much. Um, the dulcet tones you are as you're hearing apart from mine are Joe Statens. Um, he'll chime in throughout the game uh, when I bring him in and he's ready. <laughs> yeah, well, you be careful because I'll be chatting to the refs as well, so I might blank you if I'm in the middle of yeah. a discussion. Um, so we need to make sure he's ready for that. And um, Joe will also. Uh, there's also going to be a feature um, on the podcast with Joe called Stating the Obvious. Um, so uh, make sure you check out the BIHA podcast for that new feature the next time the pod is out. Uh, the, the podcast is available, and if you're interested in the GB women's setup, as I said at the start and the top of the show, um, there is a GB uh, uh, women's uh, Finland review, as well as the review of the development camp on the last podcast. So make sure you uh, keep, a, keep a keen eye on that as Nick and I go into the usual um, uh, scenes from the VHA podcast. So uh, let's say uh, I'll read out the uh, Steel Dogs lineup to you next. I'm not aware of as many of the players. I think there's, a, um, as I say, there's more development players perhaps than, uh, than ordinary. But um, number three is Tyler Nixon, the assistant captain. Number 12 is Alex Graham. 31, Curtis Warburton, the netminder. 84, Harry Rogers. Number 20, Nathan Britton. Number 15, Lewis Otley. Number 44, Declan Kime. 
Number 23 is Sam Rogers. Number 88, Tom Brooke Smith. Number 90, Tobias Reiter. Number 37, Luke Allen. Number 60, Jamie Lewis. Number 8, Jack Brain. Number 22, Josh Arian. Number 31, Evan Coles. Number 16, Stevie Weeks, the captain. Number 5, Charlie Thompson. Number 6, Aaron Jepson. Number 24, Joe Cross. Number 38, Tom Barry. Number 21, Tom Humphreys. Now, you're probably wondering why I read them out. I've, I've got this on a piece of paper, so hence they weren't read out in the order you've seen on your screen. But that's the, the, the list of players there. As I say, unfortunately, I don't know quite as much about them. Um, I was uh, recently at a game involving uh, the, uh, the Steel Dogs full team in the Murrayfield Racers, which was a first win for the Murrayfield Racers. But I don't think uh, the Steel Dogs were quite at their, their full potential that day. But you saw some little snippets of what they can do. So I'm sure this will be quite a good test for the GB University's team uh, who will no doubt uh, want to go out and put in a great performance before they head off. Um, they fly out um, on the 26th of February um, to Krasnoyar in Russia. It will be a slightly different um, climate out there for them as it will be well below freezing um, even in March. Um, the tournament's normally held in February, but it's been moved back to March just because of the extreme weather. And uh, the GBU won't really have to worry about that because they're playing indoors, of course, but it will be cold if they're going outside. So I'm sure they'll be having plenty of cups of tea to keep themselves warm. Um, as I said, the first game, they play uh, Canada on the 2nd of March. Um, that will be... Um, it doesn't, it's not giving me a time for that, but you can uh, get details of the games at FISU.net online and you'll be able to um, keep up to speed with what's going on with the GB uh, University team. I certainly think that they'll go out there and they'll, uh, they'll do us proud. Um, not Being realistic, they might not bring back a medal, but it's great um, that they're getting out there. Um, British hockey's on the up and up, so it's really all positive now and hopefully um, we can, uh, in two years' time, build on that to even Switzerland and getting higher and higher up that table and even getting the women's team in, uh, uh, to Switzerland as well and qualifying for that. So that's, that's the aim of the, the programme uh, at the moment. Um, and uh, as I say, the action will be with you shortly. We're just getting the ice resurfacing at the moment. If anyone has any questions or wants to, uh, to ask anything, then uh, please do not hesitate to uh, comment on the stream. Um, you can always, uh, as I say, tweet, uh, tweet me at Ramboliwa or tweet at BIH Info if you want any information. Um, our Facebook is kept reasonably up to date, um, but we will not be um, doing anything live from Facebook today. There will be a rundown of uh, this game um, featuring interviews with some of the players after the game on the next BIHA podcast um, that Nick and I put out, which should be out in a couple of weeks. So keep your eyes on um, the uh, Apple podcast for that. While I'm here, I'd like to give a few thank yous out. Thank you to um, the uh, committee members of the BIHA who made this possible. In particular, you've heard me speaking to him, and it's not just because he can hear me, but Joel Staten. Cheers, Remo. <laughs> and uh, also, also um, we've got a helper in the, the shape of uh, Brandon Lee, who uh, works with works with Joe's father, who's uh, volunteered to come in and help us this evening. So he press gang rather than volunteer. <laughs> I didn't get a choice. Well, he's doing a good job anyway, except yeah. for getting to bring me a subway as well as you. Uh, with yeah. favouritism. Yeah, yeah, well, you're forgetting who the talent is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean... If you do have any questions, please get in touch. Uh, um, to Heather Hunter, she's she's messaged in mentioning she misses my beard. I can't explain that my razor slipped, hence causing a baldy patch. I'm sure many men have, uh, have experienced this. Um, so the whole thing had to go and start again. So that's what happened to the beard. Um, I think we've now got the colour adjusted on the on the feed, so you should, shouldn't be experiencing any other brightness issues. And it will indeed be um, your screen uh, if, if that is the case. <laughs> it should be hopefully. Yeah. It will be one of the um, Now, GBU obviously 
in red, as you probably saw from from the the line, uh, the uh, warm up for maybe what you've seen on the ice there. Um, Sheffield Steel Dogs in the white jerseys. Um, GB are the home team, despite the fact that it's it's been held in Sheffield. Um, it's quite the norm now with, with um, the GB uh, women's program being involved in the under 20s cup to give them warm up games for their um, upcoming world. Um, championship game and while we're on that subject we'll take the time to give a big shout out to all the women who were recently um, put into the full GB squad uh, including several who have got GB uh, U experience and also um, BIHA experience um, so well done to them and we wish you all the best in the upcoming tournament in Dumfries in April Zamboni's got about a couple of laps left and then we'll get this uh, this show on the road that's what you've tuned in for at the end of the day not to hear me spraff a load of nonsense into a microphone um, and we'll uh, hopefully have a really good game I've already come to listen to you Rambo <laughs> thanks to Joe for that um, oh, yeah, you see that coming. The, we, we well, we now need an online shop. We need an online shop. We yeah. need some BUIT merchandise. We, 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 do, we, we don't have um, an online shop and or uh, BUIT merchandise as it is. However, um, if you get in touch with me, I can sell you a Steel Queen's jersey for a reasonable <laughs> price. <laughs> yeah, I think we need some words with Andy. Get, get, get sorted with <laughs> our, our online shop. We get some swag out there. Um, yeah, so th thanks for th thanks for that. It's good to see that someone's interested in buying our gear. I have to say, oh, um, I mean, uh, you, you'll notice I, I don't really have many BHA branded things because Andy normally forgets to buy a tent to fit me in. So uh, <laughs> this this is actually the healthiest I've been on comms because I don't have Nick's mum's cakes uh, in the in the go. <laughs> Yeah, Nick Mom's cakes gets us through nationals, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for a one-off game, I don't quite need as many cakes. So that's. Uh, it's not. It's not quite the uh, the sixteen hours on a Saturday, sixteen hours on a Sunday. Uh, we uh, we do you just sort of flag at the end of that thirty-two hour run, especially the third weekend. <laughs> yes, especially the third weekend, and uh, the third weekend now being even longer with the women's nationals being added to the the, yes. the general body. So yes, uh, it's, it's getting longer and longer. Um, and who needs sleep, eh? <laughs> who needs sleep? Um, I see we've got some listeners from Canada, BC. Um, uh, in between periods, if you well, right now, if you want, you can. Uh, if you let me know what your favourite um, microbrewery from BC is, that'll be something to talk about in between the periods. Uh, mine was Okanagan Spring, so uh, you can let me know what your favourite was. That would be something interesting to to chat about. Um, and f and for those of you in Vancouver, I can tell you that I've got um, Josh Cook, who is at Vancouver Island University, lined up for an interview for the next BIHA podcast. So um, please uh, please make sure you listen into that. Um, check out the, the British University's Ice Hockey Association Facebook page and uh, you will be able um, to get all the details. <laughs> um, you all the details from the Facebook page. Uh, if we're doing favourite BC uh, microbreweries, uh, Granville Island. Granville Island's a ver another very good one. I've done the tour there, which isn't a big tour, but you get loads of free beer at the end. That, so. that definitely, that's the bonus. <laughs> it's, it's not a massive place to go around, but, yep, free beer. There you go. Oh, that, yeah. that, that's my boy. There you go. Yeah, that's my boy. Of Daniel Ferguson of the uh, Murrayfield Juniors fame has, uh, has chimed in with a single dot. Uh, Eve, Eva Harrison uh, looking for a repeat, the repeat. I suppose she's wanting the Mavericks to win the final this time. Uh, <laughs> so that'll be uh, that'll be interesting to watch. Women's nationals will be a real barn burner as well as all the other nationals, which you can check out from the first weekend in April. And I think yeah, I think it's when we're talking about the development and the non-checking side, but equally, I mean, massive oversight on my part, not to mention the women's side and how that's grown. And I mean, we for years we had the Oxford and Cambridge women's teams, and that was all there was. But now there's so many of these clubs. The, the increased participation of women in the game has allowed them to to develop these women's teams, and the the work Ryan's been doing um, with the women's nationals, and 
and the coaches of, 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 of the women's team, such as yourself. Um, it's fantastic to see that growing as well, because again, it's, it's, we are a minority sport, and the more we can do to be inclusive to everybody, the better. And if it's at university level, fantastic. But it's all about that development. Joe, just, uh, just we were mentioning BC, we've now got Missouri USA as well watching us. Not the whole state, but oh. we've got <laughs> we've got people from there watching us. Might be a bit difficult to fit them all in one room. Quality over quantity is what I say. Definitely, definitely, yeah. 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 I agree, I agree. And Max Springer saying seeing this uh, stream pop up is getting me in the mood for nationals. Yeah, Max, make sure you don't miss it. Uh, <laughs> sorry for uh, bringing an in-joke to the stream. <laughs> is he ever going to get a chance to live that down? Poor uh, guy. Probably not. No. But then again, he makes him famous, I guess. What's no. the cost of fame? Yeah, one, miss, one miss goal. Does anyone remember who finished first when Eddie the Eagle done the, the yeah, long hey, jump? Uh, the yeah, there we jump. go. Yeah. Oh. And here, here they come. They, uh, it's, it's annoying now with the two, two man, the four man system. You can't see three blind mice anymore. I know. Well, maybe that's why they invented the four man system. Yeah. It was purely to put us off. So this is a, an all star officiating crew, as I said, um, and uh, they'll keep a tight leash on proceedings tonight. I understand we will be doing a national anthem, so there will be a brief pause in my audio certainly during that because you do not want to hear me singing God Save the Queen because I kind of forget the words after so long um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> oh, Max Springer's uh, increased his stats this year. So now waiting for the teams to enter the ice. Thanks to uh, everybody who's watching in that can, couldn't be with us this evening. Um, you're, uh, you're very welcome um, to be watching the stream and uh, we hope you'll enjoy uh, the broadcast and the game itself. And some, uh, some excitable uh, uh, entries to the ice there from the Steel, the Steel Dogs team. We'll get the team introductions in a minute. And then um, the anthems, and then we'll, we'll get to the anthems. If you missed the top of the, the show, um, there was interviews from the, from the GBU assistant captains and uh, goaltender Adam Long. So uh, go back and check that out if you want to get some insight into what, what it's like in the day uh, at WUGS. Um, Ivan Antonov's interview gives it give details on that. Uh, Matt Bradbury, who is basically the most professional interviewee um, that you can you can imagine, the GBU coach, um, gives some great insight into what his plans are for Wugs and how the team have been uh, preparing themselves. Um, obviously, the Sheffield team there getting a little bit confused uh, between the goal line and the blue line, but they're, uh, they're on the way to the goal line now for the team intros. The Steel I'm not sure what Kane Taylor's talking about um, with Adam, Adam Long being a pigeon. I'm not. So, uh, all the teams are being introduced here. Sheffield in their Sheffield Academy uniforms, so some of them numbers and names don't quite match up um, to the players. But um, I'll do my best to, to get the names right throughout the game. So that's the Steel Dogs, folks. Joshua Crane, he'll be going to his first Universidad. Christian Johnson there being announced. So 
so we'll... Kelly Kimberly, obviously Solomon Smith fan. Only seen him play a few times. Excellent skater, certainly. Uh, And now I understand we will have the national anthem of the United Kingdom. I'll just cut my audio for a second, folks. And finally we're ready for the game to begin. The last time I heard God Save the Queen, we won the Calcutta Cup. So should we, we should see magical things tonight. Hey, <laughs> Sheffield. I just got the dirtiest look ever from Joe Staten there. <laughs> So the officials uh, get ready. I think they just done rock, paper, scissors to decide who done the face off there. So and Andy Miller uh, obviously lost. There's quite familiar pairing of uh, Chris Cook and Christian Johnson starting off in defence for GB. Connor Henderson, Sigaris, and I think it's Ralph on the other side. It's not Ralph, I'm talking non nonsense, it's Liam Charnock. GBU in the attacking zone, Charnock dumps it in the corner, picked up behind the net by Eric. Kept in by Johnson. Cigaris now. Cigaris holds it. Nice cycle play by Cigaris. Henderson picks up the puck. Charnock fires it up the wall. Chris Cook gets it. He's pushed in. Connor Henderson. Chance in front for Charnock. If he'd taken his time, he might have maybe got, got the goalie beat there. Johnson with a big shot and a good save there. Last time GBU had an outing against the International All-Stars team, Christian Johnson was, of course, the start of the game that night. So he's one to watch in this one. The second line, his second line now out, Ivan Antonov uh, taking the face off, who we spoke to earlier on. This Ralph on the point here, makes the pass back. Well held it, Josh Cook knocked off the puck there. Graham dumps it in. Ralph's on the puck now. Turns up ice with it. Stick handling out. Makes a nice pass. Scott Henderson can't go on the end of that, but he beats out the icing call. Ivan Antonov picks it up. Plays it back up to Ralph on the point. Ralph shoots. Another big stop by the goalie who covers it up. GB will make a change, so will Sheffield.
Nice face-off win there from GBU. Good stop by the goalie. Ruskin Springer Hughes putting the wrist shot right on. Kime fires it around here's Brain. Brain. Nice hands by Brain, but he's lost it to Pywell on the boards. Puck's come out now. Greveson just puts a little bump on. That's right, or that's not Freely. I think that might be Richard Freely's old top. Or Ryan Freely's old top. Richard Freely, I don't think he's played hockey for a while. Here's Josh Greveson. Ruskin Springer Hughes. He's through a sea of sticks there. So he makes the pass in front to Price. Good stop again by the goalie. This goalie's nice and big and always in position. back, here's Solomon Smith, fires it right on, another stop by the goalie there, GBU don't manage to hold his own, oh, Solomon Smith mishandles it, under a bit of pressure now, oh, oh. did that go straight out, nope, entirely sure what happened there, I went off the glass and out. It's a very odd bounce anyway from the, the angle he fired it, but face off in the GBU defensive zone. One back by the Steel Dogs. Oh, and that's a good read by Connor Henderson. Connor Henderson fires a front shoot. Oh, good stop by the goalie. Sigaris. Sigaris tries to dump it in. Solomon Smith picks up, turns up ice himself, fires it. Puckles back. It's for Scott Henderson. Scott Henderson battles behind the net with it. Front puck out in front. Oh, Johnson can't get hold of it. Antonov, good hands. Oh, one of the Steel Dogs players has lost an edge there, shot. Another good stop by the goalie. across to Christian Johnson now. Johnson up to Henderson. Henderson. Played back round behind. Graham. Joshua Cook plays him at the boards. Antonoff now wins it. Antonoff in front. Oh, and Cook had a chance there. Fortunately missed the net. Ruskin Springer Hughes almost almost maybe took a slashing call there, but the he shoots. Oh, big stop again. That goalie. Nice big and in position there. The win here's Allen. Oh, just sneaks offside at the back there, does Graham. Oh, we're up to 60 people watching now. Thanks again, folks. Highwell won the face off. Ralph wins it back. Ralph's got it now. And turns up ice. James Scott. Ruskin Springer Hughes. Steps over the board. Just chips it into the corner. Pywell goes after it, doesn't quite win it. Ralph wins it. Kicks it forward. Here's Pywell again. Nice hands by Pywell, back out to the top. Price, good stop. Scott, in the oh, good break up there, good read by Tyler Nixon. 
next in, speeding through the neutral zone. Tom Ralph with a good stick there to get in the way. There's Pywell off the ball. Price can't get hold of it. Keim. Back it goes, Arian. Arian for checking on Ralph there. Ralph makes a nice breakout pass. Don't guard of something come off the ice there. And turn back in the zone. Here's Lidl. Lidl shoots. Blocked. Back to Greavesen. Greavesen out in front. Sigaris. Oh, good stop again. Goalie staying big there. Front Sigaris again. Oh, that's off the side of the net and it's stuck in the... Um, the Leathery plastic sheath at the back of the net. Well, they've got Zorba's uh, nation or whatever it is now. Playing in the rink. And GB have to come back out. Is that a man offside? GB just stand there, there's nowhere really for the Steel Dogs to go, this is a quite disciplined looking forecheck, have to carry it out, they do well to get it out though, do the Steel Dogs, puck's picked up by GB, here's Ivan Antonov, streaking through the, the zones, comes round behind the net, oh he finds Cook in front, oh great stop by the goalie again, I think that was deemed to have hit the net, And so we've got another stop and play. <laughs> yeah, just um, so you know that the, the clock on the screen is not the same as the one in the, the arena right now. Um, we are aware of that issue. Um, it's back live now I think here's Henderson Connor Henderson steps in shot oh I tell you what in the in the money area of the ice they're finding plenty of space but they just can't bury one and they've got the Steel Dogs development team a bit at sixes and sevens here when they're going in but they just can't find the back of the net with the goaltender being in perfect position every time but one back to Smith. Smith shoots. I think that one was going wide. The goalie made sure of it, though. And the puck's fired. And the puck again off the glass and out. We got another stop and play. I tell you, I, I honestly think if the board... Oh, Solomon Smith! What a shot from the blue line. Not sure if it took a deflection on the way, the way through, but what a shot from the blue line. That's what you've got to do as a D-man. Just make sure you get your shot through. So with, seven, with six minutes 48 played, it's GBU that take the early lead clock uh, on your screen does say it's the Steel Dogs goal but it, it was GBU that scored that one right. puck chipped in that could be ice in there yep GBU ice the puck goal assisted by number 25 for GBU Connor Henderson Jason Johnson chips a puck round the, the boards. Here's Ruskin Springer Hughes. Springer Hughes back to Johnson. Johnson back to Cook. Chris Cook, the captain, plays it to Pywell. Pywell makes sure it goes out. Goes round behind. Johnson back to Christian. Uh, back to Chris Cook. I'm getting Christian and Chris mixed up here. 
for Cross to Breen. Makes a nice pass. Hovel just pushes that one to the side. Here's Josh Cook here. Let's see what he can do. Help me. Puck gets stopped there. Arian. Ralph. Cook. Oh, oh, oh. I think the nets have went off just before Joshua Cook puts that one home. And that would have been uh, one that would have been watched at the other side of the pond keenly if, it, if the net hadn't went off there. Daniel Fay in for the draw now. Didn't quite win it. Arian wins the puck. Chips it off the glass. Ralph. Up it goes to Lidl. Chipped in by Joe Cross. Joe Cross on the four check there. Not been as physical or as mental as the IAS game so far, which was frantic in the first period. This is a much, much more uh, organised game of hockey, perhaps, with both teams being well coached. Nice play area in there. Nice pass out. Oh, there we go. There we got a bit of bumping now. Lidl plays it across. Sigaris. That's out in front. Oh, and Connor Henderson, that's just broken up. Across it goes. Greaveson. He's bumped by Graham. GB holds his own. There's a GB player down. He's looking a bit. He's not looking too clever. I think he's going to have to get off the ice. Hope he'll be all right. We'll try and update you on that one if we if we get any news. Here's Charnick. Charnick round behind. Back it goes to Smith. Smith back to Charnick. Charnick in, in deep. Cigaris. Charnick. He's got Smith open on the point. Smith, the scorer of that first goal. He dumps it round behind. Cigaris. Scaris, nice turn on the spot there. Charnick. Cross it goes to Connor Henderson, eh, sorry, Scott Henderson. Puck's chipped out. Sheffield Steel Dogs managed to clear the zone. Luke Allen on the forecheck on Solomon Smith. Hurrying him. Smith. Antonoff. Antonoff. Josh Cook, he can't find a handle on it. Puck dumped in nice. Here's Donald Campbell. Good poke check by Antonoff. It goes to Solomon Smith. Scott Henderson wins it. And he goes, oh, excellent play there by Tyler Nixon to break up that play. They step in. Oh, nice hands. Almost a chance there. Oh, and that's the first big stop that Hovels had to make, and he was equal to the task. Chris Cook picks up the puck, finds Jackson Price along the boards, but he loses it. Kimes in there, creating all kinds of problems for the GB. Here's Cook. Chips it in the corner, Pywell after it. Pywell against Kime. Nice hit by Pywell, but they both go down.
Johnson. Puck stopped. Tusker and Springer Hughes. Back to Pywell. Pywell's got very, very good hands. Oh, and that's off the crossbar. Chris Cook puts it in behind him. Jackson Price can't find Pywell. Ruskin Springer Hughes will come up with it though. Circles round, takes his time, finds Chris Cook on the far side. He dummies the slap shot, gives it back to Springer Hughes. That puck's deflected by GB over the top of the net. Will he not forced to make a save? Puck goes to Christian Johnson. He chips it in for Jackson Price to get. Price puts it around to Pywell. Nice cycle play by GB. Some textbook stuff here. Oh, and Springer Hughes can't find a handle on it. Scott picks it up. Back to Ralph. Ralph back to Scott. Little fires it across to Ralph again. He'll carry it forward. Gives it to Charnock. Charnock puts it on net. And that's stopped by the goalie who covers it up. And they've got some, uh, some happy hardcore music working the crowd into a frenzy here. Ralph, nice play by him. It's down low. Buck one there. Charnick. Charnick back to Scott. Scott shoots. Oh, and that goes wide. Faye picks it up. Faye around behind to Liddell. Play there by Barry. Barry trying to keep Liddell on the outside. Puck gets fired in front. Here's Ralph. Faye has it. That's dumped. And icing is the call. Steel Dogs will not get a change after a long defensive stand there. No, we'll have to face some fresh skaters from the GBU sw squad. Puck round behind for Joshua Cook. Stick lift there. Nathan Long picks it up on the blue line. Chips it in, Nathan Long picks it back up again. Puck dumped in, here's Ivan Antonov. Antonov finds Joshua Cook in front. Oh, the goalie again. Perfect position. Statistically, though, when you shoot it straight at his belly, he's going to stop it every time. Need to perhaps think of something else. Pick a spot, perhaps. Antonov with the win, here's Greaveson. Greaveson puts it on, oh that goes just wide. Nathan Long picks it up, chips it in the corner. Nice play by Steel Dogs to defend, but they're still pinned in there. As Antonov keeps a puck in, sips it back, here's Greaveson. Greaveson finds Antonov, nice hands by Antonov, nice hands again. I think he was looking for Scott Henderson back post there, couldn't find him. Joshua Cook goes in. Henderson shoots. Blocked. Nathan Long. Cigaris. Josh, Joshua Long now. Hey, sorry, Cook. <laughs> oh, and that's a big hit by Joshua Cook. 
Some good physicality there. Here's Charnock now, he win, wins it in the corner for GB. Is it back shot? Right on, goalie saves that again. Welcome shots from, the, from that angle. Three fifty-seven left to play in the first period. Score one nil in GBU's favour. Puck chipped out. Shot goes wide. Here's Solomon Smith. Solomon Smith comes round. Tobias Reiter almost upends him. Smith does well to get out of the way of that check. Here's Liam Charnick. Oh, and Reiter's been put down as he attempts to make the hit on Liam Charnick. Here's Sigaris. Sigaris shoots. Good stop again by the Sheffield goalie. Ruskin Springer Hughes gets put on his backside for his troubles. The Steel Dogs players are not willing to let them get anywhere near the goalie. Curtis Warburton for Sheffield Steel Dogs in net, putting on a bit of a clinic. Kristen Johnson looks up, shoots. Over the top, here's Cook. Arian plays it up. Graham can't get to it. So GB hold the zone. Here's Pywell. Let's see what his hands are like. Graham, not Pywell. Oh, and he's knocked down by Graham. And here's Arian now, he picks up the puck. Chips it off the glass. Because Cook manages to hold on to it, but isn't quite sure where he put it down. Oh, Jackson Price can't get a hold of it. Here's Pywell back to it. Oh, and that's not a great shot. That was almost like you lost the battery on your PlayStation control pad as you went to shoot. Puck dumped in, here's Christian Johnson. Johnson puts it around behind to Cook. Chris Cook, that is Chris Cook. Nice wee play up the boards. Back across to Johnson. Christian Johnson almost skates into the referee. Cook, it's up, here's Antonoff. Oh, he does well there. Scott Henderson to stay on side, keeps his foot on the blue line. Puck goes into the corner. Puck across, here's Graham. Graham puts it across. That's Jepson that's wearing the number six jersey. Josh Cook. Well, that's the Steel Dogs standing off him. No one, no one looking to go, uh, go body to body with him after what he done earlier on. Right. Plays it in behind. Allen to Jepson. Antonov picks it up. So nice no look pass by Antonov. He can't get a hold of. Here's Allen. So here's Scott picks it up. Scott to Scott Henderson. But dumped in. Josh Cook is battling away for the puck. He's won it, but oh, no, he's still got it. I thought I thought the Steel Dogs were going to manage to clear. Picks it up, shot. Oh, Henderson can't find it. Cook can't get a hold of it. Comes back to the point. Nathan Long plays it in behind. Sigaris. Sigaris oh, across. He can't find anyone. Here's Scott Henderson. Scott Henderson. 22 seconds left now in the period. And counting. Sigaris. Sigaris. You step out in front. Puts the backhand on. And that's an easy stop for what we've discovered the calibre of this goaltender is Curtis Warburton, who is a wall 
and not net. Hello to Lucas, who um, is watching in. Sigaris faces off, wins it to Greason, shot! And Nathan Long hits a field goal. Sigaris, Sigaris, he's got to shoot it. Oh, and it's no goal. Too late for Ruskin Springer Hughes. GBU will be happy with their performance in that period, but I'm not sure they'll be happy to only be one goal to nil up after. 20 minutes of action. So what we saw there in that first period was the uh, was the GBU essentially dominating an attack, um, but. The, uh, the Steel Dogs had a bit of bite about them and started putting the body out there um, towards the towards the end and started to match GP a bit more physically. Um, but really, the story of the first period is the goaltender, um, Curtis Warburton, um, just perfect positioning for most of the shots, just gobbling them up, making them look easy. And uh, certainly, he was... Uh, he was he, he is the star of the first period as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a nice goal for Solomon Smith, not perhaps who I would have thought would have scored the first goal. Uh, Solomon, uh, know, he'll know a few of these players that he's playing against. Uh, he, Solomon's at the University of Sheffield and uh, he is uh, plays for the, the Sheffield Senators um, in the, the NIHL 2 North. So uh, a, nice, a, a nice goal for him in his home rink, um, I'm sure, and his first for GBU, so a uh, real keeper for him. So... Um, I honestly, I honestly think that was quite a, a competitive first period, but certainly the the GB team are looking the stronger of the two outfits. Um, again, if you want to uh, comment or ask any questions, not saying I'll be able to answer everything, but um, you can uh, you can chime in the live stream, or you can um, tweet um, at Ram Boliva or at BIH Info, uh, and we will uh, we'll try and get to you as soon as we can. We can also tell you um, that the next time there is a stream, it will be the uh, BIHA Nationals, so please make sure you tune in for that from the first weekend of April. We'll be here from 8 in the morning right through, so uh, get get yourselves involved in that. Um, uh, and now I'll just... Uh, Joe has been working feverishly. So I'll just quickly bring him in. I think he's working on queuing up a highlights package um, so I can take a comfort break, but just before I do, Joe... What did you make of that first period? Uh, without exposing themselves too much, they did a fantastic job of defending. They, they set up quite well, and GBU, yes, they had a lot of possession, but the Sea Logs defensively were really well set up, well disciplined. At times, it slipped a little bit, but. Um, the goalie's had a great game. He's, he's, he's faced a lot of puck already, and um, I mean, some of them were routine saves, but he stopped the stuff that's in front of him. I was unlucky with the goal, but when you have that amount of pressure, you're likely to, he's likely to want to slip in here or there. But overall, no, I thought it was quite good. It'd be nice to see um, see the the Steel Dogs team or the Steel Dogs of Academy team make a, have some more some more of the puck in the attacking zone. Uh, really put that GBU defence under a bit of pressure, but. Uh, yeah, they, they, they've, they've, looked, they've looked decent, and for GBU, it's nice for them to practice. I mean, we saw a lot of cycling. Uh, we've seen some good possession in the zone, and it's stuff that um, if, you don't, if you don't practice enough and you don't have the opportunity to practice enough, when you get to the big games, it's difficult to do. You can't just jump into cycling properly. So it's a great opportunity for them to make use of just getting used to that and um, and then developing it. So they've, they've, they've sort of got those links. I mean, as much as some of the guys have played together before, a lot of them, it's guys who aren't playing week in, week out with each other. So it's good to develop those relationships. And this kind of game is perfect for that. Yeah, certainly. And um, I think the thing is, with the Steel Dogs, just watching them, there's perhaps some GBU stars of the future in there as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, the, the, you look at the, the base skills of some of these guys out there and they're doing a fantastic job. And it's like, well, yeah, there's definitely 
if these guys stay on through to university uh, in their education, there's definitely an opportunity there for some of these ki there's some of these lads coming through because there's some some really skillful looking players there, and, and some of them quite young still. So it's it, it, it's showing the development that is there in in Sheffield at least for for these juniors. So yeah, all, all well and good, good future ahead of us hopefully. Yeah, Sheffield. Uh, I have to say, one of the probably the capital of uh, hockey in the in the UK. I Don't would say, say that to Nottingham people. Uh, oh, maybe not say that to Nottingham. Well, between the two, anyway. Yeah. And so you know, it's uh, it's not surprising they've got so many good young quality players. But it seems they've got a sensible academy set up with a lot of progression available to players. So um, exciting stuff to watch. I'm sure the second period will maybe bring us a few more goals or maybe yeah. a bit a bit more excitement in terms of stats, but. Um, I've enjoyed it so far, uh, certainly. And I think you've got a highlights package. Hopefully up. so, hopefully so. Let's see, let's see. Let's see if this works. I mean, pressure's on now. See, this is all new stuff programmed in today. Let's, let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, well, that's no good start, is it? This is nil-nil. <laughs> Ruskin Springer Hughes. There we go. Still right, well, sticks I'll there. use this Makes opportunity to take a brief comfort break. Good stop. And uh, we'll be back Hughes. with you um, in, a, in a few there. minutes. Thanks Thank to pass in front. To Price. Good stop, dogs. Oh, and that's a good read by Connor Henderson. Connor Henderson fires in front. Shoot. Oh, good stop, dogs. Oh, and that's a good read by Connor Henderson. Connor Henderson fires in front. Shoot. Oh, good Hughes. Almost, almost maybe took a slashing call there, but the. But shoots. Oh, big stop again. Hughes. Almost, almost maybe took a slashing call there, but the... But shoots, oh, big stop again. Live now, I think. Here's Henderson, Connor Henderson. Steps in, shot. Oh! Live now, I think. Here's Henderson, Connor Henderson. Steps in, shot. Oh! I tell you, I... I tell you, I...
And uh, I'm, I'm back, folks, um, from my, my brief break. Um, Kelly Kimberley has uh, said the Steel Queens, sorry, the Steel Queens, I've got the Steel Queens on the brain. The Steel, the steel Queens on the brain there, Rambo. <laughs> Get adverting when you can. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm missing their training tonight to be here, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Steel Dogs goalie has been amazing. He, he certainly has. Uh, Kurt, Curtis Warburton is uh, put on an absolute clinic in positioning and being in exactly the right place. Um, he was unlucky in that goal. I think he was a bit unsighted, probably didn't see it until the last second um, when it got by him, but you know what, you're going you're gonna to let some by you when you're peppered like that. So, uh, yeah, we um, are waiting. The, the, the ice is done now, but I think that we're just waiting for the players to return um, and the uh, the staff from GBU, etc. Could be interesting, them walking across clean ice. That's what we need the camera for. That's why we leave it on the wide shot. And we'll have a... Yeah. So let's take it let's take it out. Let's have a look. See if we can catch anything. Yeah, see if we can get anything there. Perhaps we'll get a... I'll tell you what, I'll buy a round if Simon Hopkins falls over. <laughs> oh, well, he's well practised, unfortunately. I think yeah. he's, <laughs> he's walked on many a fresh ice rink. You know me walking on ice after you've seen that video of me on the, the old skis. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you're not sure about skiing. if you're not sure about the uh, <laughs> about me cross country skiing, you can catch that up um, on the Facebook page. It's disconcerting having the referees uh, com like communications in one ear, hearing them squealing and, ch and shouting. <laughs> <laughs> While you're trying to concentrate on something else, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what they're getting up to down there. <laughs> well, just a second. This is how refs communicate with players, you know. Um, it's one thing that you know you get taught to do is use your voice, tell the players what you want them to do, so you don't have to call a penalty if it's going to be unnecessary. Give them a shout, stick down, whatever, and uh, so that's how you hear a lot of hollering um, if you're you, you're mic'd up the refs. Sorry, I'm back. I was being asked. I've been asked what the Wi-Fi password was by the referees. <laughs> <laughs> All those important things. It's not like there's a game going on or anything, eh? <laughs> well, they're not making any calls anyway, so they maybe. Well, maybe no, I, think, I think they would have put the stream on. I think they wanted to watch. They've been asking me uh, the uh, the goal the, the goal that wasn't allowed because the net was off. I've already been asked to have a replay of that so they could check. Yeah. So that'll be a, a post-game review on that one. But uh, the wonders, the wonders of uh, replay systems. Yeah. We'll uh, hopefully have more of our video review system ready in nationals as well. We could, um, uh, we'll we have could the video review music as well. Oh well, well, yeah, I think we could try video review music. We can have it piped through so you can watch it as well. So instead of me just analysing it, you can analyse it, and then when I come up with a different decision to you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, the players are just about ready to come back on the ice. The clock's winding down. Looks uh, like we're going to wait right until the clock finishes. Right till the clock finishes, so they can then uh, mess about putting the goals on. <laughs> um, and we can uh, delay this period even further. Um, Get the goals on, you've got you to cut up the crease. Yeah. Goal is in that. Well, they're not even coming on. We're getting a... So it's the Steel Dogs back now. On first, Curtis Warburton maintaining the. Uh, we're not exactly sure what you're seeing here of the two referees scooting past. That's basically the, the uh, fastest and most observant the two of them have been the whole game. I think uh, they'll be tired after that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy Miller, better late than never. GBU still not went on the ice. Oh, now they are, now they are. Now, I wonder if GB will, will switch up their goalie here, because they've got they've got three. Yep, Crane, uh, Joshua Crane going into net for GBU. So Hovel took the first period, Joshua Crane in the second period, and we'll get um, 
No doubt Adam Long will play the third. Yeah, good to let everyone have a bit of ice, just uh, try to training camp, get them get on all face, uh, have a bit of a skate round. Yeah, no, Keep just... Keen. Wow. Still some GB players late from the changing room here. So teams are finally looking ready for the, the opening uh, face-off of the second period. Slight uh, tweak to this uh, GB line with uh, Ruskin Springer Hughes um, being, being put on it. I think I uh, find that Connor Henderson has maybe uh, done himself a wee mischief. So he'll, he'll maybe uh, taking a couple, couple of shifts off. Hopefully it's just a couple of shifts off. Or, GB just going slightly offside there, delayed offside, so they come back out. And the Steel Dogs hold it behind the net. Tranek tries to stop that there. It's picked up, flicked off the, the wall. Oh, well played, shot, good stop by Crane. Don't look behind you though, that's always a worrying thing. Nice pass by Christopher Cook. Plays it up to Sigaris, Sigaris. Nice skating by him, dumps it round behind, maybe a little too far. Here's Christian Johnson, Christian Johnson picks it up. Back round behind to Ruskin Springer Hughes, gets lost. Sigaris, oh, he plays it in front. Johnson picks up, shot. Oh, nice mitt there by the goaltender. Keeps it at 1 0 to the GBU team. Face off and oh, and there we are, Joshua Cook right off the face off from Ivan Antonov. Excellent wrist shot by him, just too quick for Curtis Warren to reset after Antonov with a really clean face off win to him. 2 0 to GBU. Tom Ralph, Ralph picks it up. Passed out in front. And no one picks that up there. Steel Dogs pick it up, chip, chipped on net. GB, you kind of stop there, and a little bit stagnant. Need to tighten that up. Joshua Cook picks it up. That assist is uh, incorrect on the on the, uh, the teleprompter there. It was Ivan Antonov with the assist. Oh, and it's picked up again. Comes Jepsen. Jepsen flicks it in the zone. Chases after his own puck. Scott picks up. Kept in by Nixon. Nixon got hold on, puts it down deep for Jepsen. Jepsen back round behind. Nathan Britton loses it though, and here's Antonov. GB look to break. Top stops, turns back. Chance for a forward change. That puck's gone deep, and that's icing. GB will not be able to change. Ivan Antonov, nice face-off win again. Very clean on the face-off, Antonov. Nope, loses a hold of that one, though. Ralph back round, up it goes.
Antonov makes sure the puck goes in the zone and gets a change. A couple, couple of players manage to switch for GB. Nathan Long. Ison's waved off, plays it around behind him. Here's Ralph. Ralph, up it goes. Fate, bumped. Here's Pywell, Cameron Pywell. That's a good hit there by Brain. Pywell still got it. Pywell in front, long, shoots. Good stop again by Curtis Warburton. Faye, back up to Nathan Long. Cross it goes. Shot. Oh, and that hits the outside of the net. Pywell, good hands. Out in front it goes to Long. Oh, and here's an opportunity. Half a breakaway, it's a break, uh, it's a full, he's got it, he shoots. Oh, it hits the crossbar. Or even the post. Could be a crossbar if it was a different angle, but. So unlucky, I think he had Joshua Crane beat there. Pywell picks the puck up. Long to Charnick. Charnick, back to Long. Long. Oh, it's another opportunity. Good stop by Joshua Crane this time. Spread now, stop that one. I think GB forgot that Christmas was two months ago with some of these passes they've made in the last couple of minutes. Sigaris, he picks up his own pass. It's Ruskin Springer Hughes. Springer Hughes steps in. And that pass is broken up there well by the Steel Dogs. Poke checked away by Warburton, and he'll just hold on to that. Relieve some of the pressure for a moment. But that was a couple of moments of silliness from GBU there, uh, giving up a couple of breakaways to Joe Cross. Uh, and the second one, a good stop by Crane on that one, but the, uh, the one before it, Alex Graham, he had Crane beat, but hit the post. Solomon Smith takes his shot, scored of that first goal. That's the point, Donald Campbell keeps it in. Puck dumped behind. And it's icing against the Steel Dogs this time. GAB will bring up that Antonoff line. Looking to exert some pressure now that they've, uh, they've got some tired Steel Dogs on the ice. Nice win by Antonov. Back it goes to Johnson. Oh, it's again. There's another breakaway here. Oh, third time might be a charm. But Crane getting plenty of breakaway practice anyway. Britain puts it on. Jepson almost gets one with the foot, but I'm not sure that would have counted. Henderson. Can't clear it. Here's Christian Johnson. Cook, Antonov. Antonov to Johnson. Johnson carries. Lays it off. Shot. Good stop. Good second stop by Warburton. Nice pass across by Britain to Jepson. Oh, and unfortunately, Britain doesn't time his skate very well, and it's offside for the Steel Dogs. Well, sure we'll see it the highlights package at the end of the period, but GB are lucky that this game isn't tied up right now, or even 3-2 in favour of the Steel Dogs with some of those giveaways. Ralph. Up it goes, Faye dumps it in, chased in by Jackson Price, Little comes in and gets it, Ralph dumps it, it's broken up nicely there, nice jump, nice leap there by Brooke Smith. 
Oh, and the goalie, the goalie it comes out to play it, and Ralph gets one right in the coupon from the goalie as he goes past him. Here's Little. Little hooked a little bit there. Referee's letting the players play clearly in this one. It's Little back to Scott. Scott winds up. Brooke Smith's right in front of him. Gets it on. Warbit and stops another. Don't know how many times we're going to say that before this game is said and done. Scott again picks it up. Out in front. Another good stop by Warburton. He left the rebound there. GB couldn't find it. I think he's veteran manoeuvre by the goalie there, just pushing the post off. Pretending like he wasn't looking. Good lad. And we got a stop and play. Sigaris comes back on. I think that's that's Ruskin Springer Hughes back up with him. So we'll try and get an update on what happened to Connor Henderson. But I think uh, I think he might be out for this one. Ruskin Springer Hughes lines up, wins the draw. Here's Nathan Long. Tarnick Let's put it back behind. Here's Sigaris. Sigaris wins it. Charnick, back to Long. Long, nice spread eagle along the blue line there. Not something you see a lot of in hockey. Sigaris. The puck's hit out the zone. Here's Long. Long pass it, there's nobody there. Lucky in a sense that that didn't go straight to another Steel Dogs breakaway. Steel Dogs wind up. Oh, blocked. Charnick. Referee's arm doesn't go up for that one. Here's Sigaris. Uh, steps in. Looks round. And it's one again. Sigaris wins it back. Back to Campbell. Campbell back down to Sigaris. Sigaris puts it out in front. Charnock couldn't get the shot there. I think he was looking for the one-timer. Sarris puts it around behind. Here's Ruskin Springer Hughes. And Hughes looks up. Can't find anyone outside. Donald Campbell can't keep it in. Charnock goes back to Campbell. Ruskin Springer Hughes. Rough stuff along the boards there, nothing too untoward. And they come back the other way. This is Barry on the puck for the Steel Dogs. Plays it right round behind to Graham. Arian, oh, he can't hold his own. Oh, and Scott Henderson was almost going in on the breakaway. Cook puts a bit of a bump on Arian. Antonoff picks it up, plays it round behind him. Cook again wins it. Nice hands and a nice chip by him. Scott Henderson, no. Falls over. Jepson dumps it. Crane tries to play, but he can't get it. Here's Smith. He can't get hold of it. Here's Antonoff now. He plays it round. Scott Henderson's won it this time. Gives it to Antonoff. Antonoff goes in. Deeks. Oh, and that's poke checked. It's Lewis Otley carries it and dumps it into the zone. Britton goes round behind. Cook's equal to that. There's Josh Allen, Britain. On oh, nice hands by Britain. Good stop. Oh, it's a goal for the Steel Dogs. Finished by Jepson. I think they'll give the assists to Britain. And Allen there for the passes and the rebound. 2-1, we've got a game on our hands, folks. Look, for so much of the first period, like the game was going to be dominated by GBU, but they maybe rue those missed chances in the first period because they've and they've gifted the Steel Dogs a few extra, few extra chances.
Here they come again, the Steel Dogs. Nick's in. And goes round. Brain picks it up. And here's. Pucks out the zone. Here's Brain, picks up the puck now. Brain plays it back. Oh, and Kime, if he, he had plenty of time to stop that there, he'd probably regret trying to take a swing at that. Here's Chris Cook now, picks up the puck. Let's play to Lidl, to Pywell. Nice move by Pywell. Shoots it, but gets stopped. Back check by Jackson Price. And that's offside. Both teams will get a chance to change now. And uh, face off now. Cigaris kicked out. Charnock goes in. He wins the draw. Here's Ruskin Springer Hughes. Can he do with it? Oh, and that's broken up there. Ralph plays it back to Scott. Scott finds Cigaris. And Charnock chips it in. Cigaris. Sees it. Ruskin Springer Hughes now. Oh, and that's taken away there by Joe Cross. Oh, and a bit of a collision along the barrier there. This game getting a bit more physical as it gets closer. Pass to Cigaris. Cigaris in front to Charnet. Oh, nice stop again by Curtis Warburton who just continues to keep GBU at bay. He's showing that he's more than just a big body, he keeps moving about. He's getting himself in the right spots every time. Again, folks, if you want, you can, uh, you can if you're messaging in the live chat, we can give you a mention. We can uh, certainly... Um, Take on board any questions or comments you have on the game. And uh, Steel Dogs are on the, the penalty kill now. Joe Cross receiving a, a minor penalty. Holding penalty for Joe Cross, and that puck goes out off the glass. Buckle stay in the zone. This is the GB um, power play unit. I think they've got two power play units uh, that the coach is quite comfortable with. It's certainly some of the chats I've had today around the camp as they're, they're confident in their power play and, uh, and their uh, penalty kill units. I've actually got three penalty kill units. And certainly with uh, Antonov, um, Cook, and Henderson out there, you've got three guys who can move the puck. Oh, and that was that was a nice clearance by Britain. <laughs> and here's Greavesin. Nice pass to Antonov. Antonov steps in, takes his shot. Oh, Henderson can't find that back post. Back to Long. Oh, and that's coming round. Long's after it now. Crane's just... You could hear Crane there talking to him plenty. Oh, nice move by Antonov. Antonov carries through the middle of the zone. Lays it off for Sigaris, who turns back. Cycles it back to Antonov. Back to Sigaris, shoots. Great stop again. Cook back to Sigaris. Sigaris shoots it. Pywell and Antonov screening there, but the goalie again equal to the shot. Here comes Nixon. Scaris wins it back. 
Oh, Nixon needs to be careful there. Zagaris plays it right ground to Johnson. Johnson. And still does look like they're going to kill this one. Here's Charnick. Charnick carries it in. Nice move by Charnick. And behind to Pywell. Plays out in front. Pywell wins it back. Back out in front. There's Charnick. Charnick back to point. Smith. Oh, nice wrist shot by Smith. But straight to the goalie. That'll not find the back of the net. Josh Cook comes back out with Jackson, Price, and Liddell. Josh Solomon Smith can't find a way through. Here's Graham. Nice. Oh, Solomon Smith, he may have fell over, but that was a really good defensive play. Arian shoots. Good stop by Crane. He used to get, be quick though to get across, but they didn't get the shot off. Smith's carrying it out now. Oh, and he tries to drop it, but he loses it. But dumped in, Cook picks it up. A little bit too casual maybe by Cook there. Smith. Smith loses it, Graham's got it. Graham, nice hands. Well, and I think GB will be fairly relieved that hit the net because that was turning into a bit of uh, zone dominance for the Steel Dogs there. With 50, just over 15 minutes played in this period. And the face-off here for Sigaris. Charnick. Jepsen. Jepsen wins it, plays it off the wall. Back in behind to Allen. It's the line-up for the Steel Dogs that got the goal back for them. But dump behind, here's Otley now. Only fires it round to Britain. Britain looks across. Jepson can't quite get a hold of it. Dumped in behind, here's Liam Charnick. Ralph puts it in deep. Luskin Springer Hughes on the puck now. Nice move by Springer Hughes. Fortunately, he gets it caught in. Mr. Miller's uh, feet. Good play. Find him on the point. Long back to Ralph. Ralph. Out in front. Charnock can't get hold of it. Bucks up in the air. Hits the glass. Sigaris. Shoots it. Right on again. Curtis Warburton in perfect position to make the stop. Wins it back, back to Long. Long dumps it in deep. Henderson after it. Oh, and that's chipped out. Long will get after it. Here's Antonov. Oh, and that's lost. Book Smith dumps it across. Oh, passed it to his player had fallen down. That was unfortunate for them. Pass, shot, what a stop! What an absolute magnificent stop by Warburton.
Replay up of that. What a stop by Warburton. That, yeah, that's the best stop, best stop I've seen in a while. Puck back. Faye's got it. Arians now picked it up. Faye, oh, back it goes. Cook shoots. Oh, and that goes wide. Here's Chris Cook this time, but he's lost it. Puck dumped in. Cross, it's chipped round behind it. There's nobody there for GB. Uh -oh. Lack of communication. Johnson makes a nice pass to Faye, but he can't hold on to it. And there's been a call there, I think. 12 hooking for the um, Alex Graham there. Uh, go in the box. GB will go back on the power play. Be hoping they were... Uh, they can get one this time and they're unsuccessful on their uh, their first time and they, they didn't generate an awful lot of, uh, of chances, real clear cut chances in that one. And you, you think it's going to take something, you know, like a, a real good shot to beat Warburton. So they're going to have to find, you know, good shooting lanes and get traffic on this guy or he's going to just eat up all the pucks. Shot, oh! And just they said that nice tic tac toe passing. Sigaris in the high slot puts it home, makes it 3 1 to GBU. Not much you could do about that as a goalie. As you see, he comes out one time shot. You can't see it, his defenseman's in the way as well. And that's a nice, nice finish. Gareth wins a face-off, Ralph. Oh, and well read by Otley. Otley dumps it in. It's going on the boards with Scott. Oh, nice move to get the puck to Jepson. Jepson dumps it back behind. Britton picks up the puck. Scott holds him into the boards. He's lost it now, Sigaris. Here's Charnick. Across to Ralph. Charnock. Charnock down to Donald Campbell. Campbell shoots. Good stop. I think that hit the goalie right in the moosh. And he'll, uh, he'll take a wee minute to collect his thoughts. Um, got a few uh, a few comments in. Uh, Garrett Prime Dunlop. Josh Cook is a human wrecking ball. He's been a little quieter on body contact in this period, but he is. Uh, you can tell when he, when he comes into contact with him, uh, you're probably going to come off second. Um, Stu Cook, is there a contact group set up anywhere for family friends going to Russia? I don't believe so, Mr. Cook. Um, I don't believe there is any uh, such group. Uh, I can certainly uh, put that forward as a suggestion. Um, to the, the powers that be um, in terms of uh, managing GBU, but there is not one at the moment as far as I'm aware. Here's Antonov. Oh, and that's beautiful. Ivan Antonov, the provider. Cameron Pywell, the recipient. And again... Another great play to beat Warburton, which is exactly what it's been taken in this game. You can't fault him at all on that one. Absolute pinpoint pass and perfectly finished by Pywell. 4-1 now, GB. Seem to have woken up a little bit more since they conceded that, that goal and gave up those three breakaways in a row earlier on, which you'll be able to see in the highlights package. Joe Cross just tries to dump it, but the puck's at his feet. And then here's Henderson. Is he going to get a shot off? Antonov, maybe? Oh, great stop by Warburton again with one second on the clock. Antonov, great hands. 
maybe rushed it a little bit more than he normally would because of the time and the clock, but still Warburton had to be equal to that. And he makes an excellent stop. Antonoff wins the draw, but there's not enough time to get any kind of shot off in there. And that um, will bring the second period to a close with the score. GBU men's four, Sheffield Steel Dogs development, or select rather, one. So an, and that was a, a much more exciting um, period. And, uh, and I have to say that the, uh, the intensity went up from both teams there. So uh, as I say, we'll try and get some kind of update for you um, in relation to um, the knock that Connor Henderson took. And uh, we'll uh, certainly um, have a look at that highlights package, which I think will... Uh, Certainly be a bit longer, but before we do that, let's bring in Joe Staten and see what he thought of that period. Uh, it was, uh, you know what, it was great to see the Steel Dogs in it, the Steel Dogs selecting it. Um, GB, I'm going to have a look at why they gave up three breakaways in the space of like a minute and a half. Um, and they were fortunate that we, I mean, as you said in the, in the commentary, it could have been 3-2 to them at one point. So yeah, there's opportunities there, nice team getting the, goal, the score sheet. Uh, two late goals. Well set up by the steel, uh, by the GBU team, so um, unfortunate in that sense. But much closer in that period, even if the scoreline was 3-1 for the period, it was a lot closer than that. Um, and obviously plenty for the GBU defence to work on, especially going into this tournament. But great to see the great to see the steel dogs select actually getting up there, putting some pressure on the on the, on the goalie, and the shot count was significantly higher for them in that period. Yeah, certainly. Um, I think uh, one of the one of the keys, perhaps, to to the the GB goals was a, a little bit more patience and finding um, angles to shoot from that maybe worked. Uh, we, we've seen what Sam Warburton can do when there's a a two on all breakaway. But sorry, not Sam Warburton. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis Warburton can do um, when there's a two on one break a two on all breakaway. He's not going to let in sort of these naff shots from the outside. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's it. And they started to, to set it up a bit better, make some passes, try and create those, get the goalie move side to side at the end of the day because he's, he's, he's had a fantastic game. He's saved a lot of shots, but there's only so much you can do. When you get a move inside to side, it, it makes it very difficult for the keeper to get onto them. So, um, yeah, he's still, I mean, 4-1 is no disrespect to, to him in the back there he's, he's doing a fantastic job saving a lot of shots but let's see the GBU need to really need to step it up and just develop more on those th that kind of play because yeah the big shots the big shots the soft shots from the outside and they're not troubling at all and he's, as you as you pointed out in the commentary he's getting his body perfectly in line and he's, he's making himself nice and big and it, it's a long shot where the keeper's got himself set up it's difficult to score in those situations you need a it needs to be an absolute laser beam for it to, to be going in. But, um, yeah, we'll see what they set up. But, again, all credit to him. Fantastic effort in there. Yeah, I mean, I, one thing I, I would say, if, it, if you're a young goalie watching, it's almost like an Angles master class from Curtis Warburton. I mean, when I, when I played in there, I mean, I played for a couple of years, as you remember, because I played against you a couple of times there. Uh, I'd always say my angles were terrible. Uh, <laughs> I, always, always, I was always sort of slightly off, not quite square to the puck when it went round the sides. But he's, he's really shown me, well, yeah, that's what you got to do. Get yourself square, get get in line with the puck. And it makes, it, you, they've got to go through you. Yeah. I mean, you've got a big body regardless where you've got your padding on and everything. Make him go through you, yeah. make it difficult for him. And that's exactly what he, he's been doing. And full credit to him. The last one, the last two, it's, it's the back door. Um, play it across. You just create the space. Get the goalie moving is always, it's always what's difficult. You'll see... Some of the greatest highlight real saves you'll see when goalies having to go post to post, blind, flinging a leg out, throwing an arm out, and making the save. But that's that's the exception. That's not the rule. You don't do that every single time. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a much more competitive set part, uh, period that one. It was um, a bit more even. I say there's they've been caught out a little bit. Maybe they were a little lazy GBU in that second period at the start, but started to sort of pick it up a bit there. Steel Dogs took a couple of penalties. Um, a little silly bow for them in all honesty the first one was a hold I mean he grabbed the guy the guy the player gone he grabbed the guy in the face pulled him back I think they know each other those two anyway so there's nothing malicious in there but it's a silly penalty to take the the PK for the, for the Steelogs they did a very good job on that first one the second one um, was a hook and G 
GVU managed to take advantage of it. And um, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice for the GVU team to get a power play goal on there. Just to, they, they were talking about, um, Matt was talking about the different PK P, PP teams. Uh, I'm sure that we wanted to get those guys moving. So yeah, useful for them. But um, it was again, they, I mean, it's an exhibition game. At the end of the day, it's there to give these guys a bit of ice. Uh, as a warm up for the tournament to sort of get them to bed into each other and, and, and give the guys in the Steel Dogs team a, a chance to play a competitive game um, at a different level to what they may be used to. And um, with the, both sides need to just sort of work through those those special teams as well, just to sort of to give, give them all some practice, get used to it. Yeah, folks, um, I, I totally agree with what, what Joel's saying there. Um, one thing I would say, with my big takeaway from the period, the standout player for me in the period for GB, uh, Ivan Antonov, May not have scored any goals, but provided three of them. Oh yeah, he's. he's I mean, I mentioned it before, but he's he's been he's been one of, he's been the best player for me on the GB team all game, not just in that period. So he's getting himself about. He's, you can see his hands, his turns, and as you say, he's not he, he's not put one in the G, but he's he's got three assists, and it's just as important. The guy's not there to set it up, and he's he's creating so much of what GB have had. Yeah, small small in stature, but big in impact. And and on that note. Uh, Let's have a look at some of the highlights from the uh, the second period, and we'll join you back shortly. Ruskin Springer Hughes gets lost. Cigaris, oh, he plays it in front. Johnson picks up shot. Oh, nice mitt. Ruskin Springer Hughes gets lost. Cigaris, oh, he plays it in front. Johnson picks up shot. Oh, nice mitt. Nice face off in. Oh, and there we are, Joshua Cook right off the face off from Ivan. So good. So good. Nice face off in. Oh, and there we are, Joshua Cook right off the face off from Ivan. Oh, and here's an opportunity. Half a breakaway. It's a break. Uh, it's a full. He's got it. He shoots. Oh. And oh, and here's an opportunity. Half a breakaway. It's a break. Uh, it's a full. He's got it. He shoots. Oh. And Back to long, long. Oh, it's another opportunity. Good stop by Joshua Crane this time. Back to Long, Long. Oh, it's another opportunity. Good stop by Joshua Crane this time. Off, back it goes to Johnson. Oh, it's again, there's another breakaway here. Oh, Off, back it goes to Johnson. Oh, it's again, there's another breakaway here. Oh. Good stop, good second stop by Warburton. Good stop, good second stop by Warburton. Britain, on nice hands by Britain. Britain, on nice hands by Britain. Oh, passed it to his player, had fallen down. That was unfortunate for them. Pass, shot, what a stop! Oh, passed it to his player, had fallen down. That was unfortunate for them. Pass, shot, what a stop! Traffic on this guy, or he's gonna just eat up all the putt. Traffic on this guy, or he's gonna just eat up all the putt. Where? Where? And then, here's Henderson, is he going to get a shot off? Antonoff maybe? Oh, great stop by And then, here's Henderson, is he going to get a shot off? Antonoff maybe? Oh, great stop by
So hi again, folks. Um, I'll start off with a, a bit of uh, not very pleasant news, uh, to say the least. Um, unfortunately, Connor Henderson suffered an upper body injury uh, in the first and I've had it confirmed by the team doctor he will not return to the game. Um, hopefully, and all things being equal, from what I hear, that they're optimistic he'll be back. Plenty of time on the ice for Wugs. So um, it's not totally grim, but unfortunately... Um, suffered that upper body injury. Um, also, while I was down uh, checking out what was uh, what was happening, um, I saw Matt Bradbury for for a moment, the coach of the GBU. Um, obviously, not uh, entirely happy with the three breakaways they gave up uh, in quick succession in that second period, but didn't seem um, overtly angry, which I think is pretty sensible um, given the fact that the players are getting used to playing with each other in a game situation for the first time, there's going to be communication issues. And uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, you know, if you're going to uh, you're going to have communication issues, then, uh, you know, now's definitely the time to do it. So, um, yeah, eh, eh, all's well as in well, though. I mean, as I said, I, Ivan Antonov started putting on a passing clinic and uh, GBU managed to find themselves in a three-goal three, three goal lead uh, at the end of the second. So it's 4-1. Um, still plenty to play for here um, we saw the chances that the Steel Dogs can generate and if they can bury one of those and uh, remember they will be playing against a colder goalie and uh, Adam Long coming out so you never know there is a chance they could uh, they could bury um, a couple of goals and make uh, make a run uh, and tie this thing up And uh, the teams are ready to come back out. So here the team's coming back on the ice. And uh, it's Adam Long that leads GBU out. It looks like Curtis Warburton's going to get the full 60 here for the Steel Dogs, which is maybe not a bad shout because GB started to liven up towards the end of that period and a cold goalie might struggle a bit to get up to the pace of the game. Some of the players having a bit of a chin wag and a bit of, a bit of banter with each other from the opposite teams. Liam Charnock, of course, is of the Sheffield Steel Dogs as well, so there's a playing against some friends, perhaps. And we're ready for the face-off here to, op to open the th third period. Gets underway. Sigaris in against Rogers. Christian Johnson wins the puck back to Chris Cook. Puck goes out. Oh, nice read there. Here's Barry. Barry comes through the zone. Carry shoots. That wasn't the best of shots, but there we go. Arian wins it. Sigaris gets it back. Needs to spin round as he had a player offside there. Barry picks it up again. Poke check by Sigaris. Sigaris shoots. Good stop by Curtis Warburton. As we said, though. He's going to eat all those ones up. He's in the right position. And uh, good evening to Dave Rogers, um, who is uh, one of the BIHA lackeys I suppose um, joining us so thanks for tuning in Dave here's Cook Cook to Sigaris Sigaris Weeks breaks that up back he goes Otley is it to Allen Allen dumps it in oh Long mishandles it there put himself under a bit of pressure Charnick. Skaris picks up the puck. 
He turns, fires it. Charnock, oh, Charnock, oh, Charnock getting a bit feisty along the boards there. Otley picks it up. Antonov can't stop that one. So it comes back to Scott. Fires it. Henderson. Broken up. Oh, and that's offside. That was fairly obvious, that one. I don't think there's any way that Mr. Ellis could have made a mistake there. That was definitely offside. Henderson, oh, plays broken up. Antonov keeps it in. Pywell scored that fourth goal. A nice finish. And it goes behind to Henderson. Henderson picks up the puck. Spins round. Lays it off for Ralph. Ralph dumps it in behind. Here's Pywell goes after it. But oh, he can't find anyone in front. He wins it back though. Fluffs that pass. Shot. Oh. And if we had a rose head, that's where that puck was headed. Arian wins it back. Barry's got it. Nice body contact by Barry. Plays out in front to Grievesen. Grievesen shoots. Well, that's broken up. Liddle. Back it goes to Cook. Josh Cook. Oh, shoots it straight at the goalie. Josh Cook. Nice finish of the check there by Josh Cook. That's some of the physical play we like. Long wins it. Has it to Liddle. Liddle steps in. Mishandles it a little bit. And here's Josh Cook. Josh Cook steps in. Fires it. Shot. By Smith, saved again. Nice play by Donald Campbell, nice reverse. Ruskin Springer Hughes. Arian breaks that up. Smith plays it across to Charnick. Charnick steps in, good shot. But good save again by Curtis Warburton. Weeks. Behind he goes, turns, looks up ice. Now Smith's got it. Solomon Smith plays it round behind to Donald Campbell. Campbell turns back, flicks it off the wall. Musk and Springer Hughes flicks it out. Here's Jepson. Back to Otley. Otley, good pass. Make sure there's no icing. Adam Long's moved out to play it. Plays it round behind to Campbell. Oh, Campbell doesn't handle it well. Turns back, gives it to Smith. And Solomon Smith there looked very much like he was calling for the flying V, but um, eventually got Campbell, uh, Charnock to come back for it. Here's Charnock, steps in. Bad angle shot there. Smith winds up, takes another shot. He's very confident in his shots after that first one went in. Charnick battles along the boards with Brain. Ruskin Springer Hughes picks it up. Nice pass to Christian Johnson. Johnson steps in, shoots right up. Oh, it's in! It's in, it found its way through. That's the first real bad one. I think Curtis Whitten would want back. 
that just trickled through the pads. He's faced an awful lot of rubber tonight. And that one there just finds its way home. I'm not sure if it was Christian Johnson that scored it or if Sigaris had to poke it in. So I have confirmation the goal's been awarded to Christian Johnson, assist by Solomon Smith and Sigaris. 5-1 now the score to GBU. Christian Johnson plays it up. Henderson is picked up by An Ivan Antonov. Antonov drops it to Henderson. Henderson shoots. It's blocked. Puck fired round behind. Johnson keeps it in. Keeps the puck in there. Tries to fire it. Here's Ivan Antonov. Nice play behind. Henderson. Pywell. Chris Cook. Oh, that was... Uh, there's a little bit tasty that hit there. Pucks out. Here's Graham. And the puck's picked up now by Scott Henderson. Scott Henderson. Oh, and that goes wide. It's Graham again. As well to break up the play. Puck chipped out by Pywell. Adam Long stops it behind for Scott. He picks up. He's harassed by Jepson. Puck's just fired up the boards. And it's easily kept in by the Steel Dogs. Oh, and that could be icing. And it's going to be icing because there was no chase from GB. When that puck passed, it looked like Josh Cook could have maybe won that race, but he, he seemed to stop for for some reason and the puck's chipped it's kept in by weeks here's Jepson oh that's broken up by Scott Jepson can't win it back, but it goes back to Weeks. He winds up. Good block. Uh, sorry, good stop by Adam Long. Puck one by Britain. Britain. Oh, it's poke checked away. Put it in front. Here's Ralph. Ralph through the zone. Ralph. Oh, and that's poked away. And now Griefson's after it as well as Long. Long plays the puck to Ralph. Ralph gets it to Cook. Cook chips it in for Price to chase. And Faye's got it. Faye turns back. Oh, and that's a great stop by Curtis Warburton again. Brooke Smith. Can't quite clear the zone. Grievesen plays it back round behind. Mr. Sigaris, it, it comes quickly off the wall. Here's Luskin Spring Hughes. That's blockered by Warburton, and that's way over the bar. Uh, into the uh, into the area where the Zamboni comes on. Back to Smith. Smith steps, shoots. That's not going in. Good block by Smith. Charnick comes through. Char oh, and that's poke checked away from him. 
Frank Hughes in front. Oh, and there was a chance there by Cigaris. Maybe he had more time than he thought. Smith, that was well kept in by Donald Campbell because that was not the best of passes from Smith. Charnock in front to Campbell. Campbell shoots. And they're clearing the zone here. Graham's going after it with Cook there. Cook just plays it off the wall. Oh, and that's a bad giveaway for Cameron Pywell to pick up. Pywell, Pywell back to Antonov, back to Pywell. Oh, Pywell couldn't get the backhand shot off. Cook back to Henderson. Pywell, oh no, it's Antonov. Good speed by Antonov. Shot by Cook. Oh, and that goes wide. Antonov steps behind. Wants to Henderson. Henderson out. Oh, and that's blocked by Graham. Jepson. Henderson turns up ice. Henderson, good speed. Line change. Doesn't get the shot on target. I think it was touched in flight is the indication from the referee. Puck comes out in front and it's stopped by Scott. Scott shoots. And that is gloved there. Scott shoots, goes up in the air, back to Price. Shot, save. Face off in the uh, Steel Dogs defensive zone. Won by Sigaris. Back to Ralph. Sigaris. Nice move by him. Plays it back through Charnock. Chipped. And round it goes. No ice and cold there. Puck up with Charnock. Charnock. Nice pass to Ralph. But he can't hold on to it. And it goes. Nice Springer Hughes. Springer Hughes, nice move by him. Good strength. Brain comes in. Good turn by Springer Hughes. He's trying to find Sigaris in the high slot. Couldn't find him. Back to Sigaris. Sigaris tries to chip it in. There we go, turns back round behind. Front shoots. Springer Hughes, Cigaris. Springer Hughes. Back to Long. Cigaris out front. Charnock wins it. Charnock steps in. Good poke check there. That's an excellent pass. Steel Dogs in the zone.
Brain's got it. Brain had it, sorry, and he lost it. And now it comes back for Long to Cigaris. Cigaris tries to make a pass through. Pywell, though, gets it off the deflection, dumps it in deep. Which allows the rest of the team to change up. Antonov almost gave himself a break there. Oh, and that puck just about hit someone in the stands. Was it deflected off a stick? That's souvenir for a keen fan up there. And here we go, here's a face off. Antonov wins it back. Cross it goes to Smith. Smith off the wall. To Henderson. Henderson. Well, a bit of a hold there, but he gets refs just letting him play. Back to Smith. Smith steps up, shoots. Oh, and that hits a stick. <laughs> Knocks a stick right out of Ant Ivan Antonov's hand. Solomon Smith certainly has a good uh, sort of snappy, snappy clappy uh, shot which is a new shot that I just invented. And round he goes, here's Barry. <laughs> and here's Rogers. Rogers again, turns to Barry. Barry tries to play up the wall. And here's Graham, he's had some, some game as well. Donald Campbell, Campbell looks up, gives it to Henderson. Right. Number 12, Graham for the Steel Dogs has worked his socks off the whole game. For In the back check and the four check, looking very tired now though. Here's Cook, Cook plays it off the wall, Liddell. Can't quite handle it, he gives it back to Johnson. St Johnson picks up again, across to Cook, Cook steps up. Looking for someone to pass to, gives it back to Johnson. Johnson steps back, gives it to Joshua Cook. Joshua Cook steps up, taking it back behind his net. Well, not behind his net, back into his own zone. Here's Faye. And here comes Jepson, he's got some speed on him. Jepson plays it back to Brookhouse Smith. Oh, and it's saved. Oh, and there's a bit of chatting, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of chatting away here in front of the net, and we're going to have uh, offset and minors uh, with Joshua Cook and Weeks going into the box. Um, both two minutes each for Ruffin. Just four minutes thirty-six left to play in this game. So I think we'll play some four on four hockey. And I'll tell you what, if I was the Steel Dogs, I would not be looking forward to be playing four on four hockey next to these two forwards and Cigaris and Antonov. Ralph collects it, plays it back to Antonov. Antonov takes it back behind his net. Plays it out to Cigaris. Cigaris. A real building speed coming through the zone. Nice pass to Eitan. Oh, what a stop. Excellent stop by Warburton again. So, face off now in the Steel Dog zone. steps in to take the draw. Scaris wins it. Plays it to Antonov. Scaris back to Antonov. Ralph. Bit of a cycle here in the 4-4. Four four. 
Gives you more space. Oh. Skaris doesn't make that pass, but it actually works out okay for him. He managed to hold on to it. Antonov can't hold on to that pass, though. Barry, manage, they manage between Barry and Graham to get it out the zone. Ralph makes a nice pass across to Scott. Scott carries it into the zone himself. Bit of a hit from Barry. Comes in to break that up. Great pass. Oh, if Joe Cross had got a hold of that. I'm not sure if he's moaning at himself or the player that passed it because it certainly wasn't on the pass that uh, he didn't get hold of it. Here's Henderson. Scott Henderson steps in. A bit of a hook from Graham there. There's absolutely nobody there at the point. But Nathan Long does scoop it up and give it to Greaveson. Greaveson stops, turns, gives it back to Nathan Long. Long gives it back to Greaveson. Greaveson finds Charnock. Charnock steps inside the zone. A little bit lackadaisical here from GB in this, this period on the 4 and 4. Both teams, teams back to full strength now. Puck goes across. Solomon Smith's there. Breaks up the play, does well. Ah, good follow up by him. Good pass to Scott Henderson. Henderson, one on one with Kime. Steps in, shoots. Oh, he hits a crossbar. And out the puck goes. Here's Solomon Smith now. Here's Kime. Puts it across. Behind, behind the man he wanted to pass to, which has put him under pressure. Little does the right thing in not going through him. Oh, Brain has lost his edges. An open play. And here's Price. Jackson Price steps in. Drops it off for Joshua Cook. <laughs> he tries to hit him, he comes full belt and he doesn't even move. And here's Brain. Brain goes wide. Solomon Smith keeps him outside. That puck goes right out the zone. Hard four check from Jackson Price. But Arian, Arian does really well because he got, he got a bit of a clip there, but he managed to get back up and play the puck. Brain back to Arian. Arian can't find the handle on it. Oh, <laughs> he just trips him up. And here comes Donald Campbell on a break. Donald Campbell shoots. Good stop. Curtis Warburton. You certainly uh, not grown tired of saying that in this game. And now we're having some kind of conference in the middle of the ice. Bit of silliness or banter, not really sure, could be both. Face off now, Sigaris. Here's Antonov. Oh, Sigaris can't get that shot away. Got Pywell, Sigaris, Antonov on with Cook and Johnson. All of the captains on the ice now for this one shift. Not long left now. Cook winds up. Oh, and that was miles wide. Actually clears it for the Steel Dogs. Johnson picks up the puck, makes the pass, it goes to Pywell, Pywell to Sigaris, Sigaris, nice step inside, gives it back to Pywell, Pywell, oh nice play by Graham, Johnson comes in, bit of a slash after that, and that goes out, and that's the end of this one, just seconds ticking away and Chris Cook will just take it back behind and let the, let the clock run down. And there we have it, folks. 5 1. GB head off to Krasny Yar with a win under their belt. So we'll get uh, the handshakes, obviously. We'll get to the players of the game. Uh, 
for for both teams. And uh, I don't know what you're thinking, folks. Certainly, there's one name on my lips for the uh, the Sheffield team. So, as the teams shake hands, a lot of them, as they say, know each other from, uh, as they say, Sheffield, the fine producer of hockey player, as is Nottingham uh, normally. And uh, so there's certainly some conversations and a wee bit of chirping going along the benches. But an enjoyable game uh, for. Um, I hope they enjoyed it watching at home, and uh, certainly I enjoyed watching that one. It, it it grew. It was the first period was a little flatter than the in the than the latter two. Certainly that middle frame was uh, was exciting. GB maybe made it more exciting by giving the Steel Dogs um, just just a little bit uh, a little bit um, of uh, opportunity on the breakaway with some uh, shady passing out of their own zone. Um, but certainly, um, they'll be happy to come away with a win. Um, they've got things to work on for sure, and they've got time on the ice together. Um, when they go to Russia, they're going to Russia several days early for the tournament, um, and they'll get, they'll get some time together there. Um, and as I understand it, they're all in, in touch with each other um, out with uh, their, their training camps, so um, they'll keep each other informed. So now the players of the game... And all things being equal, I should be able to tell you who the players of the game are, because I picked them, but as long as that message has been relayed uh, down to the bottom, then we should be all right. Referee's just shaking hands now. And we'll see what's happening here. There is, there's definitely players of the game awards, because I saw them. Yeah, here we are. So, yeah, Andrew Miller, the chairman of the BIH and referee. Curbus War or Warburton, as you may have guessed, folks. Um, Truly outstanding. That game could have easily been uh, in double figures if he hadn't been in net with some of the stops he made. Um, certainly, it's not to take away from the Steel Dogs because they did have opportunities to score several more goals themselves. He's, I, I'm not sure he's won the Player of the Game award because he seems to be struggling with the beers here quite quite considerably. Or maybe he just really doesn't like Carlin. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, I think it'll be no surprise with the way we were talking this guy up uh, in between periods. Uh, Ivan Antonov, player of the game for GBU. Yeah, as I say, he didn't get he didn't get any Genos, but he had three apples in a row, which essentially set GB apart from the uh, from the Steel Dogs in the end. And that is all she wrote, folks. I'm not sure if there is a final highlights package for the game. There will be a whole highlights package before we go off here. So please stay back and watch that if, you, if you've if you got the time. And thank you for taking time out on your Wednesday evening uh, to spend time with us. Um, we'll be back live um, on air on this uh, 6th of April from 8 a.m. for what will be probably tier six nationals at that time. So please come and join us for that. Um, it will it will be enjoyable. There'll be uh, 
more than just me commentating, it'll be me and Nick and uh, several others I'm sure will get involved as well. And uh, it will be an enjoyable um, weekend of hockey. And uh, also check out the BIHA podcast, uh, which should be out in the next week or so, um, which will involve reaction from this game, a look at um, the uh, cup competition um, so far this calendar year, um, and uh, some other anecdotes from uh, Nick and myself, and of course the new feature, stating the obvious. So again, guys, I think we're just about to get the highlights package queued up. Thank you for stopping by. Um, have, a, have a great rest of your evening, and we will uh, see you in April. Thank you. Ruskin Springer Hughes. It's through a sea of sticks there. She makes the pass in front to Price. Good stop. Ruskin Springer Hughes. It's through a sea of sticks there. She makes the pass in front to Price. Good stop, dogs. Oh, and that's a good read by Connor Henderson. Connor Henderson fires a front shoot. Oh, good stop, dogs. Oh, and that's a good read by Connor Henderson. Connor Henderson fires a front shoot. Oh, good. Excuse. Almost, almost maybe took a slashing call there, but the. Right, shoots. Oh, big stop again. Excuse. Almost, almost maybe took a slashing call there, but the. Right, shoots. Oh, big stop again. Live. Now, I think. Here's Henderson. Connor Henderson steps in. Shot. Oh. Live. Now, I think. Here's Henderson, Connor Henderson, steps in, shot, oh!